People in the Gospel often ask Jesus questions, and we find one in today's Gospel. Sir, will the saved be few? Will the great banquet of eternal life be enjoyed by a few or by many? Jesus does not answer the question directly, but in response he says something about God and something about us. Something about God. Jesus declares that the hospitality of God is truly generous. At the feast in the kingdom, people will come from north, south, east, and west. People from every corner of the earth will be there. So, his indirect answer to the question, Sir, will the saved be few, is no. Then something about us. Jesus insists that the wonderful hospitality of God should not be taken for granted. It should not breed complacency. Three devils were talking and plotting strategy. What could they do to alienate people from God and bring them over to their side? I know what we'll do, the first one said. Let's spread the rumor that there is no heaven. Not bad, they all agreed. If there's no heaven, why bother being good? Then the second one said, hold on a second, I have a better idea. Let's tell the people that there is no hell. If there is no fear of eternal punishment, well, there'll be almost no motivation to do what is right. Yes, they agreed. But then the third one said, I have a surer way. You do? Yes, I do. Tell us. And he said, let's tell the people that there is no hurry. No hurry? Perfect, they agreed. No hurry, and they'll all become mediocre and complacent and lazy. God won't have a chance. The wonderful hospitality of God should never be taken for granted. It should not breed complacency. We have to strive to enter by the narrow gate, which requires effort on our part. We can't just ramble up at whatever time suits us, like the man in the Gospel today, who arrives at a house expecting to be let in when the owner and the family are gone to bed with the door locked. No, we need a greater sense of urgency than that. However, the effort that we need to make and the sense of urgency we need to have should never ever make us anxious or fearful. The Lord's table is large, and God's heart is very, very hospitable. Never forget that the Lord is there to help us through the door if we turn to him in our need. Whenever, as Christians, we might be tempted to discouragement, let us remember that the Spirit of God helps us in our weakness. In our first reading, St. Paul goes on to say that all things, all things work together for the good of those who believe in God. A wonderful promise is held out to us. We just need to accept it. The man in the Gospel has asked, Sir, Will the saved be few? Jesus turns around and graciously invites. He says, Will the saved be you? Jesus earnestly hopes so.